Hey guys, Jarek here, and today we're going to be looking at two pocket pistols made by HFC. Now one thing I want to say real quick is that I always have loved HFC. Their gas blowbacks have been very reliable, they're very accurate, and overall HFC has really shown me nothing but good quality for a very, very affordable price. But I still came into this thinking that these would kind of be a little bit of a gimmick. I got a very pleasant surprise, and I'll talk more about that later. For now, let's go on to the review. The boxes of these guns are overall nothing special, just simple cardboard boxes with the guns zip tied down inside of them. First, let's look at the HG-107, which is modeled after the Colt 25. When you open the box, there's really not much inside of it. You get an instructional piece of paper, which is overall pretty decent, and there's not much to know about this gun. Of course, you get the gun, which as you can see, there's a reason they're called pocket pistols. A plastic hollow mock suppressor, this doesn't actually do anything, it doesn't increase accuracy, it's just there to kind of look interesting. And you get a small bag of 12 gram BBs. Just to throw these away, they're really low quality. Now let's look at what comes inside of the HG-106, which is modeled after the Mauser HSC. Much like before, you'll find a very simple piece of paper telling you basic information about the gun. And of course you get the Mauser HSC as well as another mock suppressor. And much like before, you'll get some very low quality 12 gram BBs. Just save yourself some effort and heartbreak and throw these away. To give you an idea of how small these guns actually are, I put some other guns next to them. On the top right is a Double Eagle USP AEP, on the top left is the KWC Game Face Mayhem Gas Blowback Pistol. Both of these are about the same size as a Glock. Keep in mind, they're farther away from the camera, so they also look a little bit smaller than they really are, and they already dwarf the pocket pistols in frame as is. They're called pocket pistols for a reason, they're very, very small. Both these guns run off green gas or propane if you so desire. They are semi-automatic and do not have blowback. Functionality of the Colt 25 is very very simple. Just like on the real one, it has a thumb safety. When it is pushed up, the trigger is locked in place and you cannot pull the trigger. When the safety is pushed down, you are ready to fire. Since this is a non-blowback gun, it does have a fairly hard trigger pull, but it's really nothing as bad as some of the other non-blowbacks you'll find. Honestly, this gun is not hard to pull the trigger because it is non-blowback, it's a little bit harder to pull the trigger because it's so small. Definitely something you're going to have to get adjusted to. Another thing to point out is that when I first got this gun, the trigger reset took quite a while. Sometimes it would take a full second before the trigger was fully back in place and I was ready to shoot again. I believe over time it has solved this issue and it's kind of loosened up and now I can fire as fast as I want, but when you first get it, it might be a little sticky. The HSC safety is very similar to an M9 safety, or should I say the M9 safety is similar to the HSC since the HSC was made in the 1930s, far before the M9 ever came into existence. I did notice that while shooting the HSC, the safety had a tendency to start drifting downward. However, I can say I never had an issue with it and I don't think you'll have any problems with this safety. As I mentioned before, these guns come with suppressors. The suppressors are purely cosmetic and don't actually suppress the sound of the gun. However, they do kind of muffle it a little bit and make it sound a little different, mainly because it's redirecting the sound forward and the sound is resonating inside of the hollow plastic suppressor. Now these suppressors do look a little comical on these guns, especially the Colt 25, but they're kind of unique and it's good that it comes in the box. So you really can't complain about a free suppressor, even if it's made out of ABS plastic. With that said, the threading itself is metal and solidly placed onto the gun. You don't really have to worry about them coming off. On top of that, the threading itself is 14mm, so you can put any suppressor on it you want. Or at least you'd be able to if this was counterclockwise. Unfortunately, the threads are clockwise, but you can find suppressors that are clockwise in 14mm. So not all hope is lost. Although, let's just be fair. Who's really going to be putting a suppressor on these guns anyway? Now that I have a moment, I should have mentioned this earlier. If you want to know more about the actual Colt 25 and the actual Mauser HSC, I added links down below in the video information. These are not my videos, but I think they are decent videos that cover everything you need to know about the real firearms. I think I'll leave the information about the real guns to people actually firing them instead of me who is just reading stuff off the internet. Although I have seen real Colt 25s at the Oregon Gun Convention many times, and I can say, this is true to the real size. They're pretty small. Moving back to the airsoft variants, these guns are very easy to gas up and very easy to load with BBs. The gas fill valve is on the bottom of the gun right next to the magazine. You can usually get 8 to 10 different mags out for both these guns before you need to regas, which is overall very good. To fill the magazine itself, simply pull it straight out. There's no magazine release button or anything like that. Just pull the mag right out, pull it down on the tab on the side of the mag. It will lock into place and then fill it full of BBs. Here's a very important note. After you load these magazines, do not push the metal button on the back or this will happen. Nothing stops these BBs from flying everywhere, which I could see leading to some very funny and hilarious kills out on the battlefield. Regardless, once you load up this magazine, simply push it into the gun and that metal pin will be pushed and you're ready to fire.
The Mauser HSC is gassed and loaded the same way. It has the same great gas consumption. The only real difference is that the magazine for the Colt 25 holds 7 BBs, whereas the magazine for the HSC holds 10. Even though these guns are $15 to $20 and made mostly out of ABS plastic, they feel very solid. The parts that need to be metal are metal, meaning the safety, trigger, and threading, and the plastic feels very solid as is. On top of that, they are non-blowback, so you're really not going to get any wear and tear just by shooting them. Before you asked, I used propane and 0.2 gram BBs for these tests. Since the suppressors are simply cosmetic, they don't affect the performance in any way, so I simply took the suppressors off for the chrono and for the accuracy test. When I chronoed the Mauser HSC, my chrono was giving me a little bit of problems, but I can confirm this gun does shoot around 250 to 260 feet per second. For being the size of this gun, that's actually pretty respectful and really not that much lower than your regular gas blowback. When I chronoed the Colt 25, I found that it was averaging roughly around 150 feet per second to 175 feet per second. Now you might be saying that's a little bit lower than your average, but considering the fact that this gun is literally around the size of my palm, that's pretty damn impressive. I first decided to test the Colt 25 at 50 feet away shooting at the headshot target. From this distance with this gun, this target is very easy to hit. For the next target, I stepped back to 100 feet away and shot at the man-sized target. I was able to hit this target consistently, but at this point I'm starting to have to lob the BBs a little bit and the shot's becoming somewhat difficult, so I'm going to go ahead and say this is the max effective range for this gun. Next, I tested the Mauser HSC at 50 feet away. Not a very big surprise, this gun can easily hit this target. You probably immediately noticed that this gun does shoot quite a bit harder than the Colt 25, but it is also quite a bit larger. Granted, it is still below average in size. When I stepped back to shoot at the man-sized target at 100 feet away, the BBs still flew incredibly straight and this was a very easy target to hit. The smaller headshot target at the same distance was no different story, still a very easy target to hit. Next I brought the Mauser HSC back to 150 feet away. This target is hard for most full size pistols to hit so I wasn't really expecting this gun to do very well. And surprisingly enough, this gun can consistently hit a man sized target at 150 feet away, even if you were having to start lobbing the BBs a little bit. What's even more surprising is that at 150 feet you were able to hit a headshot target consistently. Now you're having to lob the BBs but since this gun is so consistent it's hitting the same spot every time. Now a little bit of wind is going to knock this completely out of place, but the fact is you can still do it which is very amazing. With that said, the max effective range being 150 feet away for a human sized target is absolutely unheard of for a gun this size. So final conclusion of this gun. I came into this expecting these guns to mainly be a gimmick, to be this kind of cool thing that you give to your kid. However, I was very pleased to find out that these guns actually have very good performance for what they are. Even more surprising, the Mauser HSC can compete with your regular gas pullbacks you normally would see out on the field. So if you're really on a budget or just tight on money, the Mauser HSC is not that far-fetched to think about using as your sidearm. As for the Colt 25, it is a very small gun and the fact that it can shoot at 100 feet is very surprising to me. However, I don't think it can really compete with your standard sidearms, but I do see it having its uses. If you play a lot of milsim games and end up getting in hostage situations a lot, this would be a very good gun to kind of stash away and then break yourself out. On top of that, let's just be honest, it's a really, really cool gun. As I mentioned before numerous times, these guns are very cheap. They're only $15 to $20 and they perform decently well, let alone the fact that they are reliable. If you're even looking at these two guns, I would highly recommend you go ahead and buy them. Even if you end up not liking them, you're really not losing much money out of it. With that being said, that about sums up my review. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see all you guys next time.
I need C4. They're mad and you didn't kill anybody. Oh god, where the fuck did he come from? <laughs> Holy shit! That was a 410 Derringer. Oh, I got that bottle. Bingo! <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm not firing that. <laughs> <laughs>